So what is going on everyone? Fernando Silva here with another video and today we got a new one. We're going to do a kind of 24 hour overnight EDC because I see a lot of videos for everyday carry which usually is a ton of stuff which I don't know how people fit that into their pockets for their everyday carry and then obviously I see like my the people that do tech essentials and travel essentials and things like that for like long trips or what you need to bring with you at all times to kind of get work done but I wanted to do kind of like a quick 24 hour kind of tech essential that you would need to kind of, if you're gone for one day, if you're at a hotel for one night, kind of just the main necessities that you can maybe put in like a tiny bag or something like that. And I kind of want to walk through some of those accessories, some of those tech products that are really beneficial to kind of getting you through that day when it comes to productivity, you know, hygiene, all those standpoints. But without further ado, let's get into it. So let's get started with this video, everybody. And we're gonna start with the things that are actually on my person. So we'll start with these glasses first. So these are blue light glasses by a company called Umizato. I think that's how you actually say it, but they're they're awesome. I mean, they work as advertised. I've never actually tried blue light glasses before, but I did notice that like my eyes are getting a little bit strained being in front of a screen 12 to 14 hours a day. So they actually did send these over a, you know, a few months ago, actually. I've mentioned them before, but they're awesome. So I definitely wanna mention them again. I've been enjoying these a lot. I mean, they do what they say they do. So if you put them on, you get a little bit more of a reddish orangish hue. If you take it off, then you get, again, more blue light is coming in. So the idea is to stop the blue light or reduce the blue light that's coming into your eyes, right? Now, do, does it actually work? I guess it does. You know, I mean, I, if, I definitely feel a little bit better in terms of like eye strain and stuff like that. But again, that could also be like a placebo effect. Like I don't really know how scientific blue light glasses are, but they look good. They actually change the color a little bit. And so far it has helped my eyes out a little bit. And this is actually their cheapest one, and it's very sturdy. It can bend a nice, a nice amount. You can go all the way out. Fits pretty much any head. I mean, even my dog chewed it up, and it still works perfectly fine. And then they go as high as I think like 100 bucks. So they go from anywhere from 40 to 100 bucks. I'll link them down below if you guys do want to check them out. But if you guys are in the market for some blue light glasses, by all means, these are definitely a good option. And then to keep on with the actual accessories on me at all times, we have the Apple Watch. So this is the 44 millimeter Apple Watch Series 5. So it's almost two years old at this point. I skipped on the Series 6, and I'll most likely skip the Series 7 unless Apple really does something crazy and not only changes the look of it and the style, but also has to give me some crazy features for me to warrant buying a brand new Apple Watch. Because for what I use it for, this Apple Watch has been amazing. And the biggest workflow with this Apple Watch for me is using the viewfinder. Because if you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you know that I film everything on my 11 Pro Max. And in order to use the main camera and be, still be able to see myself and frame myself in the picture, there's a viewfinder and you can see me right on this Apple Watch, which is awesome. So that's kind of what I do from a workflow standpoint, just to make sure that I'm in frame at all times. And then obviously you have all the fitness features of the Apple Watch, which make you literally wear the Apple Watch every single day. It's almost as if once you have an Apple Watch, if you don't wear it, your day didn't happen. <laughs> that's kind of like the mindset because I have other watches, nicer watches, you know, some other ones, but I literally, I always go to this Apple Watch every single day. And again, I think it's mostly because the people around me also wear them and I get notifications from friends when they complete their circles and things like that. So Apple Watch, you know, it's subtly one of the best selling Apple products of all time. So Apple Watch Series 5, highly recommend it if you guys are looking for an Apple Watch. Again, everything's going to be linked down in the description below. And then on the Apple Watch itself, I have two Pitaka products. So I have the Pitaka Air Case, and that one is a thin case that just goes on top of the Apple Watch. And this is the only case. And this is the only Apple Watch case that I personally like because most of the Apple Watch cases that I try out are too thick, they're kind of bulky, they're a little bit ugly. This one is so thin to the point where like when I got the box, the product box, it felt like it was empty because it was so light. So this is a, like a slim plastic aramid fiber film that just goes on top of it. And then also I have their new modern kind of link band, which is also awesome. Easy to replace the links, very, very lightweight for what it looks like. Like I remember I picked it up and I thought it was gonna be very heavy, like metal. But again, it's aramid fiber, it's car like carbon fiber type material. So it's actually a lot lighter than it looks. And it's put together by a nice little magnetic clasp. If you guys know Pataka, they're like magnets all day long. And that's what they kept with this one. So that is the Apple Watch and like the band that I use pretty much on a daily basis. And like I said, this Apple Watch band has been on pretty much since it came out about three months ago. So another tech product that I always bring with me, especially when traveling overnight, gotta brush your teeth, right? So one of the items that I'm bringing with me is this toothbrush by a company called Fusu. So I've actually been a Quip user for a very long time. And Quip, you know, they do the electric toothbrushes, they do that subscription service that a lot of companies have modeled their, you know, their business after just to get that recurring revenue. So with Quip, it was, it was good for a while, for sure. It was like a $25 toothbrush. They sent you replacements. It was like $15 a month. They sent you toothpaste and stuff like that. But at the same time, 
At that point, I'm paying a lot more money long term just to continue to use that toothbrush. And it's battery powered, which means they had to send you AAA battery for it to work. And then you also had to replace the tips. So basically every three to six months, you were replacing the entire toothbrush and spending more money on it, right? So then I ended up getting this toothbrush by a company called Fusu. This one was about $50, I wanna say, but they have four different toothbrushes that range from $50 to $70. It's just a very high-end toothbrush, and there was two main things that I wanted, right? The one thing that I did like about Quip was that two-minute timer and then the 30-second kind of reminder intervals. So I needed a toothbrush that did that, and then I also wanted it to be rechargeable, and one that had, and then I guess third or honorable mention was one that could last a long time rather than having to be replaced every three months, right? So that's where Fusu steps in. They do have that two minute timer with the 30 second pulsing to kind of make sure that you're brushing each corner of your mouth. You do charge it with a little dock there. It's got like a 1600 milliamp hour battery. One charge is supposedly supposed to last you 120 days. I haven't had it that long, so, and I do charge it pretty much every single time that I'm not using it. So at no point will it be out of battery, I don't think, especially if you get 120 days of usage with one charge. So, so far this toothbrush has been awesome. If you guys want to check it out, like I said, everything down in the description below. It's got like three different intensity modes and then it has different types of cleaning modes as well, like cleaning your gums versus cleaning your teeth. So it's just a lot more advanced than what I was using before and I kind of like it, right? And even Quip tried to add an app and stuff like that to give you a reward system. It didn't really work too well. So now I'm a Fuso user and I'm happy about that because it feels kind of like uh, I just came back from the dentist every single time I brush my teeth, which is nice. So that is a toothbrush that I bring with me for the overnight EDC. So now let's talk about the phones that I bring with me at all times. So obviously the 11 Pro Max, that has been a staple for the last two years. So let me know in the comments below if you guys want like a full two year long-term review on the iPhone 11 Pro Max, because that's how long I've had it, that's how long it's been my daily driver, that's how long I've been using the camera every single time to record these videos. So overall, this iPhone 11 Pro Max has been amazing, and I'll probably end up getting the 13 Pro Max to at least test it out, but it really has to impress me. Like it has to have a lot more technology, the cameras have to be way better for me to like drop the 11 Pro Max for the 13 Pro Max. So that is my phone of choice. And on it, I always have, again, a Pitaka case on it, especially the Mag Easy case. And the reason I have the Mag Easy case, especially now, is because Pitaka has always had their Mag Easy portable charger. So their Mag Easy charger is exactly what that new MagSafe charger that Apple released for $120, and it's, it's bigger, better, and prettier than what Apple released. So that's what I bring with me for the overnight because I like to just hand that on a charge. It gives you an extra, I think, three or 4,000 milliamp hours. So it's almost a full charge on the iPhone. The one thing that the MagSafe charger has is that OS integration, so you can see how much charge is on each one and how you can charge one of them and it charges both of them overnight and things like that. So you don't have that obviously with the Pitaka MagEasy battery pack. But you can still check how much battery is in it just like any other battery bag. Just, just press the power button, you get those four dot indicators to let you know how much battery you have. And again, it's just wirelessly charging. And on top of that, in a Pickle, it is a USB-C charger as well. So if you need to charge something that doesn't have wireless charging, AKA the other phone that I'm gonna mention, then you can also do that as well. So that's the beauty about all the Pitaka kind of workflow and exactly their, their Mag Easy situation. Like they've been doing MagSafe for a very long time already and they do it pretty well. So if you guys want an alternative that's usually cheaper than what Apple's selling, Pitaka's the way to go. And the next phone has been a new addition. I got it about two weeks ago. Yes, it was from Google. So this is the Google Pixel 5a 5G, I wanna say. So this is my first real endeavor into the Android world. I did put a secondary SIM card in there. It's been a little bit tough, like I have not put my main SIM card in there because I just don't want to get into the whole iMessage ordeal with everybody that I speak to and get kicked out of group chats and stuff like that. But that Android phone is the coolest Android phone that I've used. It's minimal, I love the, like the design, by far is the coolest thing. It's just so minimal, I love the flat screen, love the color of it too, like the almost black. So like for a budget Android phone, if you're in the Android world, like if I wasn't in the Apple ecosystem, yeah, I would get, I would use that phone on a daily basis. The price point is awesome. What it can do is awesome. There's been no real hiccups or anything with it from a performance standpoint. Battery life is great. So again, if it had AirDrop and like iMessage, then I would probably kind of switch to that. Yes, the video camera isn't as good as the iPhone video camera, but for still pictures and for like normal video capture, it's perfect. So that's the Google Pixel 5a. So I've been using that a little bit. I'm gonna have a full review on it, but I really wanted to put it through its paces because I hadn't used Android like that since I want to say the Nexus 5 and I had the Nexus 5 for about a month and that was when the iPhone 5 was around and that's the last time I really had an Android phone. So this is a, a nice little upgrade right like seven, eight years later and overall it's been a great Android phone but again it's an Android phone and I'm not in that world so it's hard to really compare it apples to apples and be like yes this is better than the iPhone or yes the iPhone is way better. It's just for me the iPhone and the Apple ecosystem I'm in it and I'm not in the Android one but the Android phone and this Google Pixel phone overall it's Pretty freaking awesome. 
And there's just a few more things in that EDC. So obviously we gotta bring a wallet. I'm, I wanna get to the point where I transition away from a wallet, but for now, this has kind of been the best situation. I've had this wallet by Andar, Andar wallets for about a year now, and it's the first wallet that has that little mechanism that you can pull up that I've ever had. So that's awesome. You can fit, I think, up to like four or five cars in there, and that's what I have. Then you have a money clip in the middle. You have a spot to put another two to four credit cards or any other cards, like driver's licenses and things like that. And then you also have a, yeah, a driver's license pocket so you can kind of see through it. So from a wallet standpoint, it's awesome. It's real leather. As you can see, it's kind of aged nicely. And that's what they told me. When you buy it, it's going to look very new. But by the time, you know, six months comes around a year, it's going to look like a, like a completely different wallet. And I actually like that wear and tear on that leather. So that's Andar Wallets. If you guys want to check them out, like I said, everything's going to be linked down below for you guys to check out. And if you guys want to make some overnight EDC purchases, go for it. And then for audio, you guys know I have my AirPods Pro Max. I've had it since the day they released. They've been awesome. I've not had any issues with them. Yeah, some connectivity issues back and forth, especially when I have like betas on some devices and not betas on others and, and stuff like that. But from like people have said they've heard clicking in their earbuds and stuff like that. Zero issues with that. No issues with the active noise cancellation. And I think they're like a year and a half old now because I got them when they released. I think it was November or October of 2019. So overall, they've been great in the noise cancellation. Every single time I use it, it's so impressive for how small that form factor is for those earbuds. So AirPods Pro with that Pataka case on it, just to protect it a little bit and add some color and also have that little the hook in there. That's awesome to have. And then I also bring this ultra wide lens with me that I like to use in other situations, especially outdoor situations. The ultra wide lens by a company called Sandmark. Now you need either their proprietary case to go on your phone or they have a clip on that you can also use, but I use the case whenever I'm actually using this one just to get a better fit. But this is their ultra wide lens and basically what it allows me to use is the main sensor but still go ultra wide as opposed to using the ultra wide sensor or the super ultra wide sensor on the iPhone 11 Pro Max because that is like a watered down version of the main sensor. Like it, you don't get the same crispness from the main sensor compared to the ultra wide sensor on the native iPhone. And lastly, the two products that I wanna highlight are by OrbitKey. So, so OrbitKey, they have their key organizer that I keep with me at all times. So in there, I have a Chipolo tracker, I have a bottle opener, and then I have my house keys. So it's almost like a Swiss army knife for up to six keys or some accessories that are built for that OrbitKey organizer. And then I also have some other stuff on the keys, but I wanted to highlight that OrbitKey organizer. It's great, I've been really, really liking it. And like I said, I only have one key in there. The other stuff is, like I said, a utility key. So it's a multi-tool essentially, it's a bottle opener, it's a little ruler, it's a nail file. You, I've used it as a screwdriver before to build Ikea stuff, to build this behind me. So it does come in handy in a pickle. And then that Chipolo tracker, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's just a tracker, kind of like tile, kind of like air tags, but it's made from a form factor to fit that Orbit key. And then the final thing that we're gonna talk about is also by Orbit key, and it's their Orbit key organizer. So this is basically a travel organizer, right? But what's awesome about it is A, the quality that it's created in. So it's made out of this awesome leather and this felt on the bottom, and it's not huge by any means. So it's gonna fit, again, your 24 hour essential. So you can put your toothbrush in here, you can throw your AirPods in here, you can throw like an SSD if you need it. Like I throw my, my Sandmark lens in there, my AirPods, whatever I need on a 24 hour basis goes in this guy as kind of like an emergency kit. So in it, you get these Velcro organizers, so you're not limited to whatever Orbit key wants you to create. You can actually organize it whichever way with these little organizer Velcro things, which I don't really know what to call them, like little walls. So you can kind of organize it however you see fit. And then the top portion, actually, not only is it the top to cover the organizer, but also you can pop it off, and it's got a built-in wireless charger, which I believe charges up to 5 watts with iPhones and then 7.5 watts with Samsung, or basically Android devices that are Qi-enabled wireless charging-wise. So that is the Orbit Key Organizer. I absolutely love it. It fits pretty much everything that I'm mentioning in this video, goes in there, and then everything else kind of goes in my pockets, like the keys and things like that. But I absolutely love that accessory, and I've been using it ever since I got it. And like I said, the quality is just absolutely amazing, and it's gonna last for a very, very long time. And it does include a USB-C cable, so you can actually use that wireless charger, which is amazing. But that is pretty much all of the 24-hour kind of like overnight tech essentials that I bring with me. So you have everything from glasses to the different phones that I use to the toothbrush that I bring with me just because I want to be make sure that I have everything I need not only from a leisure standpoint but also just in case I need to be productive as well that's why I bring the sand mark with me that's why I have kind of my main iPhone and then also the Google phone has been pretty good as a secondary camera and also as a microphone as a kind of like a secondary microphone source so those are all the different ways that I use all the different devices that, that I bring with me at all times but that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Leave a comment below. If you had to pick one device out of here, which one would you choose? I mean, let's not talk about the phones themselves because everybody needs their phone, 
But all these accessories, which one would you choose and why? I'm, I'm honestly very curious to know what your responses are. And also, like, what is one tech accessory or tech product that, again, you cannot travel without that's not a phone? Always curious to know. But like I said, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Hopefully everybody enjoyed it. You found something new. And then, like I said, everything's going to be in the description below if you guys want to add to your everyday carry. But until next time, peace.